No, she's as senile as I am. I, she's out of town. It's been called for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad name. You ready? All righty. Four o'clock. Get the EDA meeting to order. We're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't see it in here. We always do it, don't let's do it. do it. Yep. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Roll call, please. President Mungi. Here. Vice President Matthews. Here. Member Furlong. Here. Council Representative Cole. Here. And staff and ex officio members present today are Executive Director Frandel and EDA Secretary Tree. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to adopt the agenda, please? So moved. So moved. Council Member Cole, or what do we call you here? Whatever I am. <laughs> Just don't call me late for dinner. There, that's right. No late. Representative, let's, okay. Second. Second. A member Furlong. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Approval of the minutes. Just ask for the. Do we want to go through anything or just approve? What do we need? Any questions, anybody? Questions? No. I had none. Okay, yeah. I haven't either. All right. Do we so need moved. so moved? Council Member Furlong or <laughs> geez, Louise. Member Furlong, thank you. Long. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll be coming shortly. <laughs> believe me. Second by. Second. Second. Council member Matthews. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 There's too many. Sorry, Joe, there's, you got demoted, there's, man. There's You're too council many member. Chairs and, <laughs> it's all right. And, yeah. Thank you very much. All right. Meeting open to the public. Anybody on Zoom Zoom? Zoom Zoom on Zoom Zoom. Okay. We'll work our way. The items. EDA dis budget and staffing for our uh, first up for our EDA discussions and action items. We have Mr. Winnick here, our finance director, to discuss. Thank you. Dan. Welcome, Dan. So I guess I, I call it EDA president slash mayor. I guess. Uh, and EDA members. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for letting me be here tonight. I know at the last EDA meeting there were a number of questions that were related to the budget and staffing. And so I've uh, got some material here that uh, was handed out to you, and I'll kind of walk you through that kind of quickly and then uh, open it up for any questions um, that you may have um, so you have a better understanding of uh, the EDA levy and, and budget. Um, so what was uh, given to you um, before the meeting um, is the 2024 budget. So it's our, our format. Um, it'll talk about... Uh, description of the activities, department services, objectives and priorities. Um, we'll give kind of a financial impact um, on operating and capital. Um, EDA has, uh, does not have any capital requests. And then on page 94 of 97, um, that's, there is the personnel summary. Um, and I think um, the uh, community development uh, director last week answered the question very well. Um, right now in the 2024 budget, um, there's a point uh, one uh, of an FTE, uh, basically the allocation of the city manager's time to the EDA. The community development director is allocated at 50%. Um, the administrative assistant is at 20% and the deputy clerk is at 0.1%. Um, Community development director's position at point five was established mid-year of 2022 um, by the former city manager. Um, and there is an attachment of the actual document. It was on April 5th of 2022. Um, and um, adding that community um, development director's position. And at that time, um, the former city manager um, allocated um, that the funding for that position would be 50% EDA, 30% from the city, and 20% from HRA. Um, also recommended increasing um, the city manager's time above the 10% uh, 
um, but we've held that at the 10%, um, which is in the, the budget. So that's how, and then the rest of the percentages were there um, prior to my arrival in 2021. So that's kind of how they were established. Um, I know there was some discussion on if there was a different allocation to come. So there was two kind of com um, schools of thought or, or discussions that took place um, at your last EDA meeting. One, I think the EDA president slash mayor had brought up if this was a commission versus if it was the EDA authority. Um, so an EDC versus the EDA, would you be charging um, uh, or allocating any staff time? Because um, what the uh, EDA president uh, mayor was referring to is that we do have some other commissions and there isn't staff that's allocated to them. The major difference between that is is, is that the other um, commissions um, really don't have their own fund, like the art and culture doesn't have its own fund. The EDA is, is basically its own entity, um, and so there is, based upon the levying authority that it has, there is an avenue f to charge for services, and really there should be um, the charging of services and allocation of, of time. Now, whether these percentages are really correct um, is something that we can look for in the future. A piece that you have to have it, um, and keep in mind is that if you were to change the allocation, the only place that really could go or, or it to be redistributed to would be the general fund. And the general fund is going to have a levy impact on, on that. So just for uh, for your reference point, a total of 135000 is in the 2024 budget. If you were to switch all of that allocation for all of the positions into the general fund, um, and, and I know um, the mayor and uh, Council Member Cole know from our budget discussion that approximately $71,000 equates to a 1% levy increase in um, the general fund. So you're, you're, you would be looking at almost a 2% levy increase if you were to take out all of the staff allocation out of the EDA and put it into the general fund. Um, so if it's something that you want to do, my recommendation would be that you would do it over time. Um, in other words, start to reduce some of that allocation um, and take a number of years to, to do it so that the general fund could absorb some of that allocation. Again, I don't believe it's appropriate to remove all of the allocation, but um, from, from what I've picked up on some of the discussion at the EDA, um, I think you're, you're thinking that the community development director at 50% is a little high. Um, and I think there's a desire to, to look at more of a, um, I'm going to say, a consultant service to provide some uh, of those services um, for the EDA in helping attract and, and retain um, economic development and businesses within the city, which you certainly can do. Um, I can stop for a question. Uh, Mayor? Well, that, now compared to the, to the um, HRA, when you look at that, is it broke down the is it broke down the same way? That's what I was trying to figure out with the difference between how the HRA and the EDA when it comes to breaking down with staff and everything else. That was my. Uh, there is a breakout of, of staff for the HRA. Obviously, um, again, based upon that the the memo, the HRA. I think the city manager is probably pretty close to ten percent in the HRA. <clears throat> the administrative assistance, I believe, is 20%, and I believe there's 10% of the deputy clerk. So really, the differentiation is the community de development director's time. And in the EDA, it's at 50%, and in the HRA, it's 20%. And again, that was what was recommended um, and approved by city council um, on April 5th of 2022. Um, when the position like was grab it out of another bucket, I was just trying to compare the difference between yep, yep. that the authority and what the what the actual committees do. Yeah. As far as that. Okay. So there is staff allocation to HRA also. Perfect. Yep. That was my question. So that's something um, for you to consider uh, moving um, forward in the future if we want to start to drop down that allocation. <clears throat> um, as far as levy is concerned, right now. Um, and we've been doing it uh, the same amount since uh, 2022. 
Uh, so 2022, three and four are all the same. And it's been um, a levy of approximately $201,000. Um, we do budget um, uh, $2,000 in 2024 for interest income. Um, and then you, you have expenditures uh, budgeted at just underneath $200,000. Um, the biggest component of that is your personnel costs at uh, approximately 135,000. And then you have uh, contractual services at $54,000. And I will get back to that um, contractual services in a second. And then there's also transfers. There's a transfer of $10,000 from the EDA that goes to the general fund. Um, the HRA has a transfer of $20,000 that goes from the um, HRA to the general fund. Was that 50% for the, for the budget for the, um, was that including 50% of the time also? I mean, is it the reason why it's 50% coming out of the EDA? Was it supposed to be 50% of that position going towards the EDA? Are we talking about the community development yes, community position? Development. Yeah. That's 50, that that fifty percent again was what was recommended and approved by city council when they established the community development director position. I get that, but was yep. it was it designed to be fifty percent of that person doing the EDA then? Because that's why it's fifty. I I definitely sound. I definitely think that yeah. I mean that's and not that's really what I'm looking why, at the time yeah. that's actually been put in and what we're what the <coughs> is being charged for it. Yeah, I mean definitely if, if you um, look at the memo um, that to me is clear that that was the intent, that that community development director would be 50% allocated. In addition to that, the, the um, existing city manager at that time was anticipating that they would be spending more than 10% of their time on the EDA. Um, and so there was a recommendation that even that percentage be increased. So right now in your 2024 budget, you do have approximately $49,000 that's in a general contract consulting services. So you do right now have the budget um, that's been approved to actually go out and hire um, a consultant. Um, and that's where in the past that there has been uh, services that have been purchased. Um, so you do have some funds that are available today um, in moving you know, forward in the 2024. When we start to get into the development of the 2025 budget, um, I will be coming back and, and meeting with the EDA to see what are some of the changes that you want in your budget. Um, in the past, I've worked with uh, the EDA president, um, um, Robert, um, and so he would um, give me his line item budget that he wanted and, and making sure that we were in agreement with that before it was ever presented to the city council. So we will be doing that later this year. And then another piece for you to, two, two other pieces for you to be aware of is that one, I know that there's another item um, that's on tonight's agenda. <clears throat> and I know that you were talking about it in the past um, at different uh, EDA uh, meetings. And um, that's relating to the possibility of pro providing some sort of either a loan or a grant for some infrastructural um, improvements. So what I've included in here is your balance sheet as of the end of uh, last year, which will show you that the EDA currently has uh, $479,000 in cash um, that's available. Um, so there, there is money available in the EDA um, that would be a lot, you know, that, that you certainly um, could um, fund um, some sort of a grant or, or loan program, if, if you said. Yeah, it's uh, uh, about the fifth to the last page. It's after the budget. Yeah, I'll give you a chance to go. There's just a one page. Fine print? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah. Comes off the ENCODE system, yes. Fine print. Does everybody see that? No. Oh, there we go. Here we go. Got it. Past the word. Just right past the words. Yep. All right. 
think that's there yep, that's Jesus exactly goes. it. Yeah. So you're saying we can use part of that fund to fund some sort of <laughs> yes vehicle to subsidize not subsidize but to use for a facade program or something. Right to to yeah to supplement the the program. Yep. So the EDA does have funding that's available um, for that. Um, the only requirement to utilize that would be that there would have to be some sort of action to appropriate. Um, those funds um, and put it into a budget um, so that they could be spent for whatever um, purposes that you decide on. Um, and then I just kind of wanted to, to let you know the last couple of pages and there's uh, I think three um, pages that are, yes, they are the fine print. Um, and what that is is it's the market values um, for pay 2024. Um, but just before that is the is Minnesota um, state statute four six nine point one zero seven, which um, limits the amount of levy that uh, the EDA can um, levy for, and so it's point zero one point zero one eight one three percent of the estimated market value. So what I've done is if you take that. Um, percentage and you multiply it um, and I've highlighted it North St. Paul's total estimated market value for payable 2024 which is one billion four hundred and seventy six million seven hundred and twenty seven and six hundred if you multiply that you could um, for 2025 levy up to 260, approximately $267,000 versus the 201 that you're doing today. Um, so that's another component that you can um, look at. Obviously, if you raise levy, um, it does have an impact, um, you know, on the taxpayers. Um, but um, it's information for you to be aware of as you're making your decisions um, and as we start to look at uh, the 2025 budget. We've always done the maximum levy, haven't we? Yeah, uh, we had. We kind of stopped that in 22. So 22, 3, and 4 have been held steady, and then market values obviously have gone crazy until this, <coughs> until what we're going to see in, in pay 25. Um, they finally flattened out, but we've seen some significant increases in market values. Has there been 201 last several years? Yeah. So there is a, the opportunity to levy more money, which gives you more money in your budget on an annual basis. You do have some cash right now, um, you know, that you could utilize uh, for some programming. Um, you do have uh, the budget and the budget authority right now um, up to about $49,000 for consulting services. Um, so you definitely could utilize that for, I think your intention was maybe to, um, to hire a consultant. Um, and I think, um, in the packet of information, not my packet, but the original uh, packet for, I think um, there's a list of po potential <coughs> economic development consultants um, that Brandy put together. I think there's nine of them. And, um, and obviously there may, there may be other ones. I'm not going to say that this is all inclusive, um, but uh, there's some very familiar names um, that are there that have done an excellent job in economic development, not just here in this city, but in, in other cities around in the, in the Twin Cities. So there are, there are many options for you. So with that, I'm kind of, from what I got from the last meeting, I think I've hit on the points, but certainly want to give an opportunity for any of the Members, um, if you have any other additional questions on the budget that I could help out with, I certainly will. I think the biggest question I had was how much was coming out of EDA for the community development person piece and how does that tie in with the EDA? Because I think, you know, city manager, that's kind of your department of how does that 
community development piece and EDA piece because they kind of work together. Mm -hmm. um, so as you, you know, if we're going to go do some sort of consulting or whatever, but I think the piece is community development and EDA piece. I don't know if we do have a, if we do go to a contract or not. Uh, just depends on what kind of person you get. Mm -hmm. You know, how well rounded. Exactly. And, and my opinion is I think you just hit the nail on the head right there. Um, I think your outgoing community development director, um, you know, strength is in planning, um, isn't in the economic development realm. Um, but it's kind of like the same thing in, in uh, some of the discussion that you had last week. Do you move to a, you know, do you keep it as an EDA authority or EDA commission? And part of it was, the, your decision was, why don't we staff ourselves completely up um, as far as members? Um, and then maybe f going forward, you may change that um, course. Same thing here. Um, I think before you go out and hire a consultant, let's, let's see what um, the talent pool shows um, for the community development position that's, you know, that's open. Um, and there may be somebody who comes out of it that has a lot of strength in the, in the economic um, realm, and if that's the case, um, that may be your answer instead of a, a consultant. But um, you always have the opportunity to supplement that uh, because there are, um, you know, I, I know in the past um, the um, EDA utilized uh, the St. Paul Port Authority, um, and they have a lot of strength um, and a lot of expertise. So you may end up wanting to supplement that from time to time too. And that was the question is, you know, that's why I asked 50% of the time was, you know, how close was that? We don't, you don't do any, when it's multiple, there's no like job codes or anything like that people do as far as when you do timeshare or anything like that? Not under her timesheet. There are some departments that do that, but that's not one of them. So what I've talked about with some other ones that those are two really opposite. So it'd be pretty hard to get somebody that could probably be on both ends of it. So we should probably which is easier to get people in when we need it compared to the job. So to me, that would be, you know, is it easier to bring in these, these great uh, resources we have here and focus, you know, on that as far as community development as that role. And I think it's going to be pretty tough to try to find one that can do, uh, do both very easily. And I think time-wise, bandwidth-wise, I don't know what it was, you know, for her before to try to split the two. Was it realistic or unrealistic? Yeah. I mean, she had a strong planning background for sure, but I don't think the EDA was as much on her radar previously. But she picked it up Let's well. Let's make it successful for the person that we're looking for. We don't want to have them, you know, figure out the skill that we really need to focus on and then decide if it makes sense to have that one person do both or break it up and say, you know, do a little more outsourcing when it comes to the things we need on the EDA. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Is the community development, I'm sure that's a very important part on your, yes. under your radar, isn't it? Yes. Would it be easier for you to have that skill of the of the um, leaning towards the community development or the EDA? In my realm, the community development, but okay. we'll see what kind of spring experience they bring under their belt as well. But okay. yeah. Well, that's why I think we have to have that realistic going yep. into this. Indeed. Because we don't want to shortchange anybody, ourselves or them. Agreed. Something that's not realistic. All right. Thank you very much. Any questions, anybody? Oh, yeah. You're not done. Good. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'm only kidding. <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I guess I'm looking to the historian of the group more for my questions than I am for you, Dan, but thank you. Um, is it safe to assume I take the 134, knock 50% off of that, or half of that to get to 67? Um, would that be the 50% that it would represent? Um, for community, I mean, is it rough math? Is it 50% of the salary? Is it 50% of the funding budgeted? That's my budget question. 50% uh, 50, 50 is of the total costs of that position. Um, okay, and of so, the position, not of what we have budgeted. Right, so okay. it is um, 84,000. Okay, thank you.
So, because I mean, I'll, I'll I'll look to Member Furlong in my tenure um, on the EDA. The EDA has always looked for, has wanted, and I believe had at one point in time a full time EDA person. Mm -hmm. um, that individual, that that position went away, um, and. The EDA has been championing, championing to get someone back on board in a full time in a full time role, um, and during COVID, um, five positions were eliminated within the city, and in order to help gain the community development position, the directorship back, it was combined with money from the EDA to help fund a portion of that. But back to your. Um, Original question, Mr. President, Mayor. Uh, yes, it was the intent that 50% of that position's time be focused um, EDA related. Um, don't know if that was realistic or, or not, to be honest with you. Um, but at least it was a way to fund the position. So it's of my opinion going forward, I would like to hire an outside consultant and, and not have um, the community development director be solely responsible for bringing business into the city, advertising for the city, being the cheerleader for the city, um, but recognizing we still may have to fund a portion of that to make the overall budget balance. Um, so you know, that's, that's, that's my opinion. I don't know of the 84,000 reflected what, um, you know, there's nine names, uh, nine organizations here on the list that we can take a look at that um, may offer all or portions of what we're looking for. But I guess that's that's the overall impact. Is if we dis if the or if the EDA decides to go in a different direction, that will then impact the the funding for personnel. My assumption is that will impact the funding for personnel and what we have to do from a levy. Is that correct? That's absolutely correct, and that's where my, my suggestion would be to ratchet it down over a few years. Um, so maybe, you know, this year we, we knock it down to 35%, um, and then, you know, get it down, and, and maybe it's totally eliminated after three years or, or whatever, you know, is decided. Okay. But yeah, that's how I would um, plan to try, to try to have it work out. I just thought you were talking about the city manager's portion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, Brian. I didn't you're here. <laughs> I'm just talking out loud. <laughs> I think for finance questions, I'm good. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, if would you like me to stick around for your your next topic on facade improvement program? If you could, mm -hmm. it'd be great. Got an eye for it? No, I, I think it's a it's a fantastic idea um, that's um, that you're having that discussion on too. I, Dan, I, can I hold you up for one sure. second? I just want to finish up that item A as here because part of that was the um, DJ budgeting. Thank you, and then but the staffing part of it. So I just wanted to kind of finish that part off. Um, so back on um, April 11th, the mayor and I met with Troy Woods. And we met with uh, Peter Gigliardi, uh, both good candidates. Um, Troy's had experience in the city with uh, working with uh, Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts. I guess his, his children were involved in that. We had uh, he's also a board member of the Independent School District 622, as far as involvement with the kind of the community. Uh, Peter Gigliardi, of course, he's uh, in business with a startup um, with him and his brothers, so they have that business experience that we've been looking for. Um, have had a conversation with uh, Brandon from Max. Um, he is interested. I'm going to set up a meeting with him to get together. He just wants to talk about it um, in more depth. Um, also called um, Stacy from uh, Sweeties Candies. Um, asked her about her interest in it. They have, well, the Sweeties, they have the coffee shop in back there now. They also have that appliance business. Um, but she has also expressed interest in that as well. So two of them we've interviewed, um, more to come on the other two, but uh, I guess the question is, do we, are we just looking at getting uh, three more people for a total of seven members, or 
kind of what your direction may be. Seven was what we had before, so yeah. Yeah, back I know I have a couple other ones because we reached out to. I was going to go down to Sandberg, talk to them. I haven't had a chance to get down there yet just to hit some of the other businesses around too as well. So okay. I think we got a, a good good start and we told them that we're, we're gathering information. So um, I know we Brandon was able to, to reach out, so we're able to do that. So I think uh, I think we're in a good good position to get some good quality candidates. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah, so that's where we're left off anyway. Yep. Any other questions with that? Yeah. Right. Okay. Or any more suggestions of people to talk to that you guys had in mind? Or? Do you want to have a time frame so we can say we need to get back? Because I know we discussed and we told them we're still going through the process, so we should probably set a date for when we can uh, be to go to get going on this as far as that. Yeah, we can set up uh, interviews with those two people as yep. well, um, and we can report back. Uh, initially, we were going to we're staying on month to month meetings until we get a full crew, and then then potentially look at the quarterly meetings. But uh, so we can just report back at the next meeting. So maybe by hopefully next month, maybe we'll have a couple. We'll be able to have our oh, candidates yeah. together. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. let's have a the vote or the to go through for the next meeting. Then sounds good. Yep. EDA function the same way as the rest of the commissions and the committees that mayor appoints and picks, interviews and picks. The EDA is the EDA any different? I guess is what I'm trying to ask. That they're not, to my understanding, okay. it, commissions or um, authorities. Okay. I'm comfortable with it. I just wanted to go on to ask. Sure. Good question. Well, by next meeting, we should have. Yep. I agree. All right. So that's good. a goal for the count. Still has to go. For, everything has to go for the council. It would. So the next, so we have our council meeting and the first one here. When is the May? Where's the second one in May? Seventh, the first one. So it's seventh uh, and 21st. 21st. Okay. Seventh. Where are we at now? Okay, so one month from, yeah. all right. Time frame, I'm just trying to think I'll be, I don't I don't necessarily have to be, but I might not be back yet after my hip replacement, so. Get you can just management. come to my house maybe? Yeah, there we go. Swing on over? You should be walking the same day. Yeah, I'm not playing with a full. <laughs> running. Yeah, running, there you go. Yeah. So we'll see how it feels, but yeah, for 21st. So I just, because we have to hit the, to remind me too is so we get the candidates together we present them to the the um council then they're voted on so what meeting do we want to have it there for that but just go ahead we haven't been having the eda meetings at the regular time no nope. um so our next one's this yeah what, what's the next normal one um is that the first is it the second tuesday second tuesday yep. in may may um Yeah. So, so if we kept that yeah. and we get busy on uh, bringing some people in and talking with them, then we can make a recommendation here and then take it to the next council meeting. Correct. That's what I was hoping to do. And that's usually just putting the consent. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So yep. let's do that. So we, I would just want to plan to make sure people yep. know we're doing. Perfect. Okay. And yep. that'll be four o'clock, not three o'clock. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Four of the fourteen. Four of the four. Four of the fourth. Okay. Does that work for you? And that'll be my last meeting before I go. Um, I'll send you off. I leave the next day. You can wear your gear. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Um, and not that it matters, but I'm traveling that week. So I'm not going to be, I won't be here either, but that, but you will be. I will be so here. Still yep. Yep. Sounds good. All right. All right, so now moving on to the facade improvement program. You can briefly touch on this. Uh, so we had the program once upon a time. Um, the facade improvement program, grant program, was established, established to support uh, and encourage small business to reinvest in the downtown business district. Uh, the program back then, we, I think we did matching grants to the small businesses. 
There were two options here with the grant amounts. There was ideas of just a mini grant that um, would be potentially a forgiven type grant or there would be a facade improvement grant where there would be a match type program. Um, I was talking with Dan earlier and we're thinking that more of a skin in the game um, idea it might be a better idea for moving forward for having people invest into their own improvements as well for us to do a type of a match program. Um, and as we discussed before, the target area was the downtown properties on 7th Avenue. Um, a couple of things that were cut out of it were if they were going to only do signage that we weren't going to be allowing that. It would have to be part of a group of things that they were going to be making improvements on. Um, what would you like to add to that, Dan? I think I think uh, City Manager uh, Brian, I think I think you you hit on uh, good components to it. Um, and then um, I think you and I had discussed that, uh, you know, that the grant payments would be made on a reimbursement basis, um, so there wouldn't be the upfront. Um, and then we kind of talked a little bit about um, the whole application and the application process. Um, and uh, I think we were, um, uh, city manager and myself were in agreement that there should be an application you may want to, you know, not just clear and color photos of the current building facade, but if there's any renderings or anything of what it may look like after the project is complete. Um, and then the processing component to it, um, we kind of had a discussion on this, and, and, and this is really up for, for you to discuss. So many of these items um, that are here through the application, which would be reviewed by city staff, are really subjective. Um, and the award of points um, then therefore is subjective and which could be challenged by applicants. And so it may be more beneficial to have the application, the information, and then schedule um, applicants to come and present their ideas right in front of the EDA itself. Um, and then the EDA would have, you know, up until their next meeting to actually approve or disapprove of the uh, of whatever that plan was. Um, and so uh, that was kind of just our, our thoughts on to, to that component to it, but it really would, as far as the grant, to not have the, uh, as it's so-called, the, the two tiers, the mini grant with just, I guess, no matching requirement, that it would all be required to have a, a, a matching requirement, and then you would set kind of, I guess, an upper dollar limit in, into what the, the EDA would be willing to match to, to somebody else. And again, the city's uh, or the EDA's component wouldn't be given to um, uh, to the owner um, until all the work and proof of invoices and payment has been shown to the city. Um, so that was kind of our thoughts of what we kind of uh, kind of looked at the program. But uh, and then there may be some, um, I guess, you may see a different vision for some of the properties downtown and you may actually want to develop some, I guess I'll call them standards um, that you may want to see in the facades. Um, but I think it's a great program. Thank you. Your input. It's kind of laid out, I think what Maybe next steps would be if you're in agreement with that. I know this is still in draft form. Um, you can sit down with Dan and uh, kind of streamline this a little better. Um, like you said, the points program just doesn't work great. It's subjective. Um, you know, layout, you know, like them turning in receipts and showing that the invoice has been paid for, you know, things along that such, more of the details. And we could bring back a more streamlined draft, if you will, and then come back for final approval and then uh, go from there. Sounds good. Does that work? I think having skin the game is mm -hmm. definitely the way to go. Yes. Absolutely. Are we looking at an interest rate or anything that we're going to be charging them for 
Well, the, right now, how it's looked at is it's not a loan, it's a grant. It would be a grant. Um, so it would just be, it, it just has to be a matching grant. And again, um, you know, first of all, the, the work has to be in line with what the EDA um, agrees to. Um, and then it has to be to the EDA satisfaction upon completion. And then there has to be proof of invoices and payment made. Um, and then the city would would match up to a certain dollar amount. I mean, there actually has to be a grant agreement that would actually be a, um, established. Uh, our attorney would have to help us out with that. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, a good point. It wouldn't have an interest rate. No it would payback. be no payback. It would no payback. Just, just it would, yeah. Just think, okay. Well, yeah. and that's just one of the ideas. That's just one of the ideas. Yeah. So, I mean, you could do just that to where you could make it a grant. You could do a low interest type loan if you'd like. Um, there, we do have options with it. So, okay. Well, I know if it's a loan, it'd be a nightmare for finance department to be dealing with collecting and. Yeah, you know. it would be a little bit of a challenge, but and I, I mean, think if that's if that was the direction that the EDA w w desires, then we would figure a way to make it happen. But I'm not 100 percent positive, but I know that there's like banks that will. Uh, help with that end? Yes, and, and we, yeah, yep, there are, yes. There are, okay. Yep. And they would do all the paperwork, they would do all the collection and all yep. that, representing the, the city. Yeah, they usually do it for us. Your... Yeah, and they usually do it for a, a small nominal fee. Yep. But yes. It's just a, an option. Would it be out of line to have a set amount that if we did do it in a grant, that then if they paid the grant back plus a set amount to the city? I mean, is that an option, or is that oh, necessary, certainly it certainly is a, an option that you could do? Yeah, I mean, you you could set it. Um, you know, you just have to. It can't be too high of a, it resulting in too high of an int or interest. If there, you wouldn't call it ne necessarily an interest. It would be a flat fee that they would end up paying. You just wouldn't want it to be such a high amount that, if you calculated it as an interest rate, it would be. 25% or something, yeah, because yeah, um, there are rules uh, against that. But yeah, you could do that. Just different options. I, no, there's you know. a lot of, yeah. maybe, should we look at other cities, how they program it? I know Oak Hill's got a, a grant program or interest program, and I think they, they work with a bank. And some people, yeah, they step back and allow the bank to do all the work, and credit union, what have you. Um, Different options. Should we maybe set a dollar amount? Yeah. How much we want to take out of that four hundred thousand dollars? Maybe set aside, you know, two hundred thousand dollars for kind of a starter amount, hundred thousand. And do you set aside a single maximum for a borrower of ten thousand, or it's, you know, well, if it's a grant, we're going to have to have a max cap on that. Right. Anyway. Mm -hmm. We're not doing anything with the money right now anyway, so I'm not following why we need to set money aside right now. I think that's... We kind of set up the program. We want to keep some so money we, in the account. We know how much... But where's the money going right now, though? The money is in the account. Uh -huh. But it's not uh, earmarked to the facade program. I'm just thinking, do we set a limit for earmarking? Some yeah, of money. I think it'd be a good idea. Fine, we're not earmarking anything else, at least. I mean, no, I. We're not talking about any other topics where money's going out right now. Right, right, but you know, to kind of give a little bit more information, I, you know, I think what um, you know, um, EDA member Furlong is is referring to is that we need to keep. A certain amount of money just for cash flow purposes, and usually what I use utilized on the onto that is just like with the general fund, um, and the EDAs in the same boat. So is the HRA because they're a levy. We we get our we get our first levy dollars from the property taxes not until the end of June, so you're approximately six months. So if you take your budget, which is two hundred thousand dollars right now. Um, you probably need to hold 50% of that to pay the bills uh, for half of the year. Um, so there's 100,000 um, that really is off the table. Um, so that leaves uh, a remainder. But what what he uh, what uh, um, I think Councilmember uh, Furlong is really trying to get at is that the program should only have 
we need to designate how much you're willing to put towards this program. That it's not a limit, limitless pot. Um, if it's um, two hundred thousand dollars, or it could be the remainder, the you know three hundred seventy-nine thousand. Um, but so we know as an EDA right now, just throwing out a number, we know what businesses would would want to partake in this. We don't know that. We don't know. Well, we didn't have an active program, but I have had one business approach that have. I'm sure that's there's a, yeah. several businesses. I think so too. Sure. I would think that we would want to find, get that information. That's important. Yep. Well, we have a. Or we're just going through. We, we, we have a, a number right now of what? 400. 79 cash? 479 in cash. 479 cash. Track 100,000 from there because you don't want to go below that because uh, you need to cash flow yourself through the first six months. So 379. Um, are, you know, are you willing to give all 379 to this program if there was that much of a need? That would be the question. Um, or do you establish that, um, you know, uh, $200,000 towards this program? Again, it can always be amended. Right. Um, if the interest is that great, um, you certainly could amend that and turn that up to $300,000 if you, if you so desire. Um, or look to the future years to, to increase that dollar amount. Um, again, there's a lot of details that whether it's, you know, a loan payment, whatever the case may be, but, um, so, um, so if you were just looking at, let's just say, sake of conversation, if you were to say $250,000 and you were gonna have a max cap of the match grant would be the, the EDA's contribution in a grant um, would be twenty-five thousand, so it would be fifty thousand dollars per you know total project would have to be verified and and uh, proof. Um, you could do ten. Um, if there's a higher demand, I mean that's something that you know this you know the EDA and the city, for that matter, can look at because um, the city can um, you know look at that look at that too. Um, so there's other options that are open for you in the future, but you can amend it. So my thought is to get a number go out a maximum, in a maximum that mm -hmm. we're willing to give out for the program. You know, it could be the 200,000, whatever. And then once we reach that point, then we can decide if we want to increase it or you know, do we stop it? Do we max it at, at $200,000? And then we get an interest out there and see what people are interested in. Then we divide that up to see what we can do with that money. You know, maybe it's only 20, you know, 10 people interested or five, whatever. So then we can figure out how big the projects are, but, you know, have a maximum amount. But it gives us a, a number mm -hmm. that we're working towards. I think another important part, though, as well, is so you go out and you find out if there's interest. Well, okay, what's your parameters then? I mean, are you willing to give $500 and it's a $50,000 project? Then really I'm not concerned or not very interested in the program. But if it is a larger number and it's a reasonable amount that they're willing to put into their business as well. So it's just trying to have some kind of parameters when you're going out to approach some of the business owners to say, is this something like this more in your well house for and some improvements on the building. Um, I think we might be a little better off having some idea of what we're going to be offering a bit. I mean, I get yeah, the idea. It's a loan offers a grant, too. There's two different things besides that, yeah. I indeed. And can we do a mixture of both? We can do whatever you'd like to do, then yeah, whatever we decide. <clears throat> yeah, we need more than a certain amount, then it becomes a loan type of thing or grant. Maybe let's look at other cities, how they have other programs. And That's a good idea. Kind of good model idea. something that they have. It gives, at least gives us an idea, the demand for them. And I think it's a good idea. Yep. Sound good? You good? Sounds good to me. I'm good, man. Okay. As long as you're good, I'm good. <laughs> All righty. Thank you very much, Dan.
you. I appreciate Thanks, it. Dan. Appreciate it. Dan. Thanks, Dan. For our next meeting, we got to get a cover for your microphone, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> I, Before California every time you get it, it's. I was just thinking the same thing. Yeah. I can just go. Across Nothing else. I'll take my sock off and I'll put it over. Next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. Item C is EDA project updates. Um, I have a list here. I think uh, it's worth kind of going over them since uh, it's been a while. Uh, item A on the list is uh, 2579 7th Avenue. That's a site between Sidewinders and Fallen Angel Tattoo. Crossroad Properties provided a listing agreement to market the site. City Council voted that down, the listing agreement, and instead directed the staff to have the property appraised. The property was appraised in December of 23, and the estimated market value is $110,000. Uh, no further action has been taken on this site. I think the idea was if, uh, you know, some business came in town, was wanted to know what properties we had available, we would make it available to them, and then yeah. we're having control of the site. Correct. We now have a value, so perfect. Uh, Article 7, also the Lily Development Project. Uh, construction is underway. I think they're working on the third floor already. It's going fast with those prefab walls. Yeah. yeah, it's going good. Um, and the plan to be completed and open for move-in by fall of this year. Developer Jim Laval intends to rent the space on the northwest corner of 7th Avenue and Margaret, the old OSI building, uh, which is Tracy Luther's building, as a temporary leasing office. Um, item C is Delaware Place Plat, uh, 2329 17th Avenue. Doug Anderson, Andrus Built LLC, entered into a contract for private development with the city to build 10 townhomes uh, units on this city-owned property their property now, but at the northeast intersection of 17th Avenue and Delaware Avenue. The preliminary plant and planned unit development application was submitted on March 26 of 24 for staff review. The Planning Commission will hold a public hearing on the proposed May 2nd, on that pro on proposal on May 2nd, and the City Council is tentative scheduled to act on May 21st. Exciting. Item D, Margaret Street Commons, across the street here from City Hall uh, in late 23. Staff engaged surveyor to replat the development site to combine the development lots, separate them from the parking lot, and establish the necessary utility easements. The platting process was completed with the final plat approval by City Council on March 19th of this year. The city-owned parcels were conveyed to the Housing and Redevelopment Authority at that time. The property was appraised an estimated market value of $230,000. There is a potential interest. Um, I don't know if that's released or not, but uh, from another developer in town here. Uh, item E, the Taco Bell site, formerly Oil Can Henry's. Uh, the site plan was approved in the fall of 23 to develop a Taco Bell at the site of the former Oil Can Henry's at 2371 McKnight Boulevard. A billing permit has been applied for and will be issued once all the plan improvement contingencies have been satisfied, one remaining the recording of the easement agreement. Item S F is the Reflex Medical and River of God site. Uh, back in the fall of 23, staff reached out to DSGW architects at EDA's direction for a proposal to prepare a facility space analysis for River of God Church. The thought behind the activity is to understand the space needs for the church that the EDA may assist the church to potentially relocate so that Reflex Medical may expand to the east onto the church site. Staff also had a meeting with Pastor Dennis McGrain of River of God Church seeking authorizations from their organization to move forward with the study if authorized by the EDA. Uh, Pastor McGrain has indicated that the congregation has decided not to move forward with the study at this time. The congregation prefers to keep discussions internal to their organization at this time. Staff reached out last fall, but was unsuccessful in connecting with Kevin Fuller with Reflex Medical to try to understand if there were alternatives to making the company's expansion needs. Uh, no new updates since that time. Pine Tree Center, fire inspectors went out there, went through the property about a year ago to make some minimum requirements where being addressed, a uh, fire sprinkler system and, and annual tested and inspected, properly, property properly secured, and exterior maintenance items. The property owner was also given a list of items to be completed on the inside that have not been completed, uh, missing ceiling tiles and other items that could be addressed with a new tenant. 
There's nothing at this time that would lead the enforcement officers to consider it a hazardous building or condemned. Uh, item H, which is part of that building, the pizza factory, um, no official updates on the business. However, there is news that the business Facebook page that a potential sale is in the works and they are looking for a site to relocate to. Did you have anything further you want to add to that? Uh, so Cal at the pizza factory, he had open heart surgery here, uh, I believe April 1st, and uh, he is active, actively looking to uh, sell, the, sell the, the business. And he did have a pen, potential person that I think is still in negotiations. Gotcha. And relocation, I don't know. How's he doing? An option for him or not, yeah. depending on who buys who buys the business. Have you heard all he's doing? Uh, heard heard it went well. Good. Doing good. 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 Uh, other priorities: uh, identify staff needs for EDA and explore options. Uh, kind of what we went over earlier. Continue to develop uh, the facade improvement program after discussions today. Marketing strategy utilizing EDA's promotional video prepared last fall by Open Window Productions, which is on our website. It's also on our YouTube site, so it is out there. And potentially update to the downtown design manual. Uh, this was adopted by the city council in 2005 per resolution 05-143. The manual list standards are guidelines for architectural, lighting, landscaping, and signs downtown. It has been suggested by the EDA that the design guidelines might be prohibitive to new development and, invest and investments downtown. And that is it for that. Thank you very much. So item D was just the 2024 EDA meetings. Uh, as, as discussed earlier, uh, we've been going month to month, which we will keep with our regular schedule for next month on the second Tuesday of the month in May. Um, May 14th, May 14th. Yeah, 4 perfect. All right, any updates from staff? I'll try I have to questions. kick us off. Um, I, I do have some questions. Uh, listed in the packet, there were nine um, businesses that offered uh, EDA, um, don't know exactly what in depth they off, they offered, um, but it's consultants. I don't know if they were, you know, full on or, or partial or whatever. Um, we really just kind of brushed through that, really didn't address it during today's meetings. Um, is it the intent of the EDA to hang tight um, until we are fully, fully? staff for lack of a better word at seven um, and have um, you know a, a new director in place or do we want to move forward and start to talk to some of these organizations and see um, I mean it, the electronic copies are thread to each one of the organizations mm -hmm. um, or do we want to you know start to interview might be the, the wrong word to use but have conversation I mean are we are we ready to move forward or we just want to do we want to sit on pause? Well, last time we discussed, we were talking about getting up to full staff and then working our full council or group and then digging in. Okay. The only reason I bring it up is we as an organization haven't done anything to promote our city in probably six months. Sure. And I'm very concerned that the longer we sit, the further behind we're going to be. So can we run a parallel path? Mm -hmm. Can I ask if, uh, so I mean, we did the promotional video. We do have it online on our YouTube. What more are you thinking about when you say that we don't? I want somebody out there finding that. people to go into Article 7. I want somebody to develop that lot. I need somebody banging on doors and attending franchise meetings, talking with other developers. Um, see, that's kind of what there, was There's a networking was. group out there. We just don't have a body in it. No, and that's you. where I'm thinking these people do. And I think... If I may suggest that uh, you know behind the scenes here, we can start gathering some information, especially off the known commodities that we have actually worked with in the past, and the Port Authority, Baker Tilly, and at least get some ideas and some directions on kind of what they do, 
and at least and bring that information would back. Still be looking into it. Correct. Yeah. Yes. That's the main part. Yeah. And that's a piece because that that's a parallel path in my world. I agree. Yeah. yeah. That's that's where my head was. Sure. Okay. Yeah. That's where I was because I know you were mentioning you were looking into that kind of stuff. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Are are we not going down the path of looking to replace like having a new community development director? We are for community development director, okay. but not for EDA probably. Okay. That's what we're looking or may have some EDA yeah. responsibilities yeah. or so, correct. Yeah. Yep. But priority will be not the development. fifty hours or correct. What we yeah, because there wasn't fifty. Yeah, exactly. There, there wasn't fifty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And by having the contract, we would get that hundred percent working just for the EDA. Well, I would think the resources that you guys have, Brian, and working with with past companies, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna know a good fit. Like any time we start bringing in outside yeah. third parties, it's, it's got to be the right right fit. But I think that's where we got to just trust and lean on on you guys and staff. And these companies, I would imagine, you know, once we're in their envelope per se, then yeah. you know, when they have those conversations, bring up our name. You know, what do we have to offer? They would know yeah. what property we have, and yeah. you know. We have to get that from Jim too. He needs to specify because you know what you we just heard now. They're talking fall opening up, so that's probably our clock's going to start ticking. What does he have for space? How big space mm -hmm. does he say? I got this much space. I can divide it this much, or do you know how was he going to want to jockey with walls, interior, and things like that? So we need to get something from him fairly soon to say, okay, what does it look like when we start reaching out to these businesses? What spaces are you offering? What different sizes and can sure. they be? Indeed, with those nine work live spaces on the bottom, when I mean, he did say he has ability of removing walls and making right. it bigger and, you know, we can get that information. Just want to make sure that he was, you know, like, is there a maximum? Like, we can only go two over because then we got a structure wall or, you know, something like that yep. too, to, just to kind of get what we can jockey for, for space with. Indeed. Um, the property Pine Tree Center. Um, so we talked a little bit about the pizza factory, um, and it's public information that it's it, that he's looking to, to sell or and or has sold and and or is relocating. Do we want to contact the owner of that? building again we contacted him I think a year ago and the dollar amount was thrown out um, do we want to start those conversations again to see what he looks he's gonna lose his only tenant his last tenant I've tried I reached out two weeks ago left okay. him a voicemail I, I'm not here back I will call again um, okay. I do have his number so okay. are they up said, to date you well? said that I apologize I didn't no no, no I didn't oh, yet. oh okay no, I didn't are they up to date with everything they needed to do after the last inspection? Are they res not responding to you? Are they responding to the city to continue down the path to make sure they're building safe? And I will follow up. I was over there. He came up in a conversation today, but I I will uh, check back in with them I as think well. We need to make sure that you know it's it's still even though it's three almost empty, we still have to be able to make sure it's you know within our code I think we need to stay on that yep and they and they were and they have yep. um, they did get their sprinkler system up and going for where it needed to be um, but yeah more conversations awesome. need to be had with them thank you and I guess I would just like to make sure we take more of a pro proactive approach to what potentially may go in there as opposed to find out you know is he looking to sell is he looking to sell um, and work you know very similar to what we do with the Lilla building, can we bring somebody else in to help him develop? Can we, you know, take the proactive approach to what that's going to look like as opposed to, you know, just hope? Yeah. Because we don't know if he's actively trying to sell it or if he's going to actively try to improve it. I mean, we don't know his intentions, and I think that's important as we move forward right. of what. Mm -hmm. There's a sign out there. Is that for rent or is it for? I can't. I it's thought there was a. Forever. Is it just a for rent sign? No, there was no for sale. I can't remember when I drove by what what sign was out there. It was just rumor, not secondhand stuff. Nothing from the horse's mouth that, that he might do something. But I. Uh, but I agree with Tim. Is you know, it would be nice to know. Absolutely. Because then we, as the EDA, can 
hopefully facilitate or even help with what Achieve goes goals. what goes over there. Yeah. And so that all all those topics we just talked about goes back to some sort of fighting that cheerleader. Right. So I think that should really since we know fifty percent of the budget, you know, we're not gonna go down that path. We're gonna focus on doing a consultant path. I think that should be I think that should really be our goal. Mm -hmm. Like next month let's I think Brian, you guys and staff, you guys are gonna know, you know, maybe we interview two of these companies, you know, basically off the bat, like what do we feel, you know, is a good fit? Well, we can look into two to see if maybe a representative from each one yeah. of them could come here and talk to us. Sure. Yeah, awesome. <clears throat> so you have the network. It's all about networking. Yep, for sure it is. 100%. I agree. With that, I'm officially done. Mm -hmm. Thanks, sir. All right. Anything, Terry? Nope. No staff updates? You're quiet. I'm good. Yeah, you said Terry, oh. nothing from you. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Wow. Oh, that's okay. a surprise. Yeah, I His got mind is in Montana. Yeah, already, yeah. <laughs> Anything for you, sir? <laughs> no. Nope. I just hope you do all well through it. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah, no. Get out back to the golf course. Yeah. That's the main thing. Thank you very much. If nothing else, you can get taller. Can we taller? Will you be taller? I hope so. I'm going to six five hips put in. You know. There you go. I don't know. I don't know if there's advantages anymore. Maybe a little shorter. Get the lifter better, kit put in. Getting get get easier get in and out of the cars. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Well, I appreciate it. And if there's nothing else, call for adjournment. So move. So move. Second. Member Cole. Second. Member, Member Matthews. That's hard to say. It is. Member Matthews. Maybe I just go back to Thomas or Thomas. Uh, Tom, or he was Williams. 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 Yeah, Williams. Williams. Really easy. Yes. <laughs> all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it.